Next up, we have Dylan Howell. Uh, Dylan came to Portland from Boise, Idaho. He quickly fell in love with the city while on a, on a photo assignment and instantly decided he needed to move. Portland is beautiful. I don't blame him. He lives near Mount Tabor. I think I'm saying that right. I could be wrong. With his two cats and his wife, Jess. Outside of photography, he spends time cycling, working in his Miata, rock climbing, and touring the local vegan restaurant scene. Dylan is an SEO professional and has worked on thousands of sites, ranging from small businesses to 10 plus million page e-commerce sites. And today, Dylan is here to share his knowledge of leveraging SEO for Cadence. Dylan, how's it going? Hey, doing really well. I actually live in Boise and you don't meet many people who stray from Boise because it's just a great town, but totally. But Portland yeah. Have, like, it can draw you into the, I visited Portland last, I think February and I left Boise and it was just so dry and cold and there was like, nothing <laughs> blooming. And then Portland, everything was like beautiful and green and lush. And I was like, yeah, I could live here. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, it drew me in as well. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for being here today. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll just be backstage. Otherwise, the mic is yours. Cool. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. So I have a, a little slideshow today. And thank you all for, for being here. Um, it's my first time really talking to an audience that isn't already warmed up to who I am and what I do. Uh, but I am a photographer. And then I teach photographers SEO. So Basically, when I was going through this slideshow, building up the slideshow, I wanted to make sure that it would be relevant to small businesses that might be using Cadence or developers and designers that are using Cadence to build sites for small businesses. Uh, and so I hope these tips are going to be useful and helpful for you all. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have questions, and then we'll have some time for Q&A at the end as well. All right, so what we're going to cover today, uh, what is SEO? How does Cadence help? And I'm going to give you guys a few non-cadence specific SEO tips because I, I thought those would be helpful and I hope they are. And then I'm going to dive into some of my favorite SEO strategies that I'm able to implement uh, because of cadence or with cadence. All right. So quickly, uh, what is SEO? And that's really going to be like improving the overall visibility and traffic and revenue for your websites and different uh, social properties. Uh, via search engines. Uh, this is a search console graph from a Cadence site that I built. It's a little side project and it's been fun to work on, on my in my spare time. Uh, so really like most of the time when we talk about search engines, we're generally going to be talking about Google. Google's by far the uh, largest search engine. Uh, but we can also be talking about things like YouTube or other social medias that have search. Uh, TikTok search is becoming larger. Uh, Instagram has search that's fairly decent, et cetera. Uh, one of the ways we're going to go up about improving our SEO results is going to be through creating relevant content for our potential clients. Uh, here's a, an example from my site that's a, a guide to vegan restaurants in Portland. A lot of my clients are vegans and I live in Portland and nobody had built a really good guide for this. And so I went ahead and did that and it drives a lot of traffic to my site. Uh, another avenue for optimizing your site is through performance and technical optimizations. Uh, obviously cadence out of the box is like pretty dang decent for performance. There are some tips that we can share to improve that. Uh, and then there are a bunch of technical optimizations that we can do uh, via cadence as well. And then finally, another huge aspect of SEO is going to be building brand and link authority. Uh, so this is like going back to the earliest days of Google uh, when they created PageRank and realized that how many backlinks a site has is a very decent approximation of how authoritative that site is and how relevant it, or how, how much it should show up in search. Uh, backlinks have been important for SEO ever since. And brand authority, I like to think of it in simplest terms of how many times your site or your, your brand's name is mentioned online. Uh, or how many times people are searching for your brand in searches in, in Google search. Uh, so an example would be doing events like this. I'll see a huge spike in people searching my name on Google. Uh, that is a signal to, to Google that my name is important and that can help increase my, my search rankings. 
All right, and how does Cadence help? Uh, these are like the quick bullet points of why I like Cadence. Uh, its overall performance is really good. Uh, that's that's something that you see in the groups all the time, people posting their near 100 PageSpeed Insights scores. Uh, Cadence out of the box is very performant. Uh, Cadence blocks have made it easy for non-developers and typical small business owners to create content using the block editor. Uh, it's really nice to see people getting away from different page builders like uh, Beaver, Elementor, et cetera, and, and just doing block-based WordPress. Uh, the Cadence theme, I think, has been somewhat of a groundbreaking theme for WordPress and the way that people can get to use the customizer properly and get rid of a lot of themes in the past that were hard to set up or not really working with WordPress properly. Uh, Cadence has, has fixed that. Uh, the starter templates are great. Uh, a lot of people are offering their own custom starter templates, and those can be awesome as well. And then the cloud library sections. So if you're a designer, building sections for your clients and then uh, allowing them to, to use those has been super nice. All right. Here are the non-Cadence SEO tips that I think will be helpful. First, you need an SEO plugin. Uh, SEO Press is my current favorite for WordPress. Uh, Yoast is decent. A lot of people use Yoast, and there are a lot of there's a lot of documentation online. So, it, if people are very new to WordPress, recommending Yoast is pretty easy. Uh, Rank Math is okay. I've I've noticed that a lot of small business owners can get overwhelmed by Rank Math, uh, so I, I definitely prefer SEO Press or Yoast. Uh, that SEO plugin will do some title optimizations or make those much easier. My biggest tip there is to not use your main target topic and append that to all of your titles site-wide. So for my website's example, if I'm targeting Portland wedding photographer, I don't want that site description that is what where people typically put that main keyword. I don't want that added to every site title on my entire site. I only want that to be targeted on my homepage. Uh, so going through that process, if you're a designer and you're setting up somebody's brand new site can really help them out. Uh, meta descriptions are pretty simple. The, they'll typically grab the excerpt. Uh, the plugin will create the open graph tags typically with existing content and featured image. It'll create a sitemap. Uh, the, the standard WordPress sitemap is much better and now actually exists in the past few years. Uh, but I like how these third-party SEO plugins handle building sitemaps. Uh, no indexing tag and category archives for many small business sites. Uh, not showing these archives in search results is going to improve their overall search performance uh, because they're such poor quality results. Um, and they're typically going to be wanting to target those topics with better content or with the actual blog content that they, they have those tags or are categories appended to. Uh, disabling author archives. If you aren't running a website that's multi-author or like a news publication, you probably don't need an author archive and disabling that can help. And same with date archives. If if you don't need people to look up like what all of your July 2019 content is, you probably don't need a date archive. And then you can consider some different schema opportunities. Um, homepage local business schema can be really great. Uh, a lot of these plugins are now doing article schema properly, and they're able to add the author information as well. Uh, so that's really nice. And the, another step if you've created a new website for somebody or, or if you've just created your own website is to verify your search console. You cannot start collecting data until you verify search console and search console is your, your key to Google search. Uh, it's where you get all your information about impressions and clicks and ranking. Uh, it's where you can see technical issues. Uh, they'll warn you maybe too often about different things that they're seeing that could be wrong with your site. Uh, but it's very key that you, you do sign up and, Verify Search Console. And I recommend the domain property. It requires DNS uh, verification, but it shows all of your URL prefixes. So HTTP, HTTPS, et cetera, will all be in that one property. You can verify all four of the other URL properties just to troubleshoot if maybe HTTP is indexed when you want HTTPS to be your main uh, actual domain. And then using the site 
colon search operator. Uh, this is a, another tip. If you've created a brand new website, if you're doing a domain migration or anything like that, or just to check up on what pages on your site are actually indexed, this is one of the quickest and easiest ways to do so. It also shows you how your titles and meta descriptions, etc., are being formatted. So you can quickly see if you need to change your, how your titles are, are set up in, in your SEO plugin. And then the thing I see on most of small business sites that I work on is there will be a handful or a lot of low quality pages that you didn't want to be indexed or didn't know were indexed. Uh, sometimes people have like secret pricing pages indexed or other examples of pages that they didn't want to be public facing uh, that Google has found and, and, and put online. So use that site operator to see all of the pages indexed for your domain. And then you can use the uh, Google Search Console removals tool to remove any unwanted pages. And you can also use your SEO plugin to add a no index tag. Generally, it's under advanced settings and just do not show this page in search results. All right, time for some cadence tips. Table of contents block. This is one of my favorite blocks and one of the early reasons why I gave or cadence blocks a, a, a look. Uh, table of contents can really help with longer form content. And this is one way that you can get nice uh, site links for your blog posts and other longer form content uh, to show up in search results. And it, it creates uh, easy jump links to headings. Uh, I just really like them both from a SEO perspective and just from a pure user uh, experience perspective. So a table of contents block, you can pick which headings you want to show. Uh, you can style it however you'd like. Uh, it's one of my favorites. The posted and updated date. This is another feature that I really like in Cadence. Uh, on your individual blog posts, Google really likes to see when you have updated content. Uh, so you can leave the posted date on and or you can show the updated date. Uh, this is nice to not have to do manually. In the past, I was always changing my published dates or going in and manually adding an updated date to my content. Uh, this is one thing that I do to my content semi-regularly. And I typically do see a ranking improvement just by updating content that is already existing and potentially changing the posted date to a, a more current date. Uh, single post breadcrumbs. This can be really helpful on sites that maybe have uh, many subcategories or categories of content uh, or nested content with like a, a ch child parent uh, setup. Uh, these can show users where they are on your site if they land on one of those pages. And it can also help Google better understand the hierarchical relationships between that content. Uh, so bread, breadcrumbs can be really nice. And this is a fun tip that I really like in Cadence is just setting the uh, either row or section HTML anchors under advanced uh, and to use descriptions that are maybe keyword rich. Uh, there have been studies to show that setting these anchors can actually help SEO performance. Uh, so using like your main keyword or main topics for those sections uh, can really help. And it also it makes it easier for you to find the right row when you're actually editing your content. Uh, better heading structure uh, via the advanced text block. Uh, I can't tell you how many sites, it's practically every site that I look at, uses headings purely to style text, where they think H1 will just make the text larger, uh, H2 is almost as large, et cetera. And so they're, they're using headings to design the page instead of thinking of headings as like the outline to their content. Um, so the advanced heading or the advanced text block allows you to separate those two. Uh, you can keep your heading structure completely separate from your styling and think of it more as an outline to your content. You can nest your subtopics hierarchically. Uh, the overwhelming SEO recommendation you'll always see is just having one H1 for that main topic of the page. It makes it easy to do so. And I, I like this browser extension called Headings Map. Uh, this allows you 
on any page that you're on online to just quickly see its its heading structure. Another one is detailed SEO has a, a decent heading uh, section, but this one's super quick and easy. And this is a great example from Shell Creek Photography on how to properly structure headings. Uh, I believe that's their homepage. Image SEO. Uh, I could go on and on for image SEO as it's been one of the main uh, factor, main topics of my career. Um, one thing I've noticed is that people think that they have to optimize all of the images on their website. And when I say optimize, I'm, I'm talking about an optimized file name. So a file name that just describes the photo and includes the topic you're trying to rank for. And then maybe optimizing alt text to not only describe it, the photo from a accessibility standpoint, but also try to sneak in the topic and uh, keywords that you're trying to rank for as well. Uh, typically, you should concentrate on doing that on your homepage and maybe your more important pages and pages that are ranking well, but only for a handful of images. Uh, Google's not going to show uh, 100 images from one website for a topic, uh, but they might show five or 10. So uh, definitely concentrate on a small number of important photos, typically the largest photos on the page, the, the photos that are highest uh, towards the top, um, and nearby important headings, et cetera. And then a tip that's more of a like design technical tip, uh, don't expect images that are in CSS backgrounds to ever show up in Google search. And same with base 64. I, I have seen some base 64 images showing up in image results recently, but uh, previously Google said that they will not index those. Building a better footer. Uh, the top uh, example there is just in the free theme using the customizer, which I think is great for most people. Uh, and when I think of a footer, I, I really want to see links to important pages. Um, the middle, I think, is using hooked elements that's in the pro theme. And then uh, the bottom, I, I believe, is using hooked elements as well. Uh, local businesses should consider having their contact info in the footer, address, telephone, etc. Um, a link to your uh, like permissions page or would be great. Any legal information is awesome. Uh, linking to your socials, obviously. Uh, but yeah, building a footer from an SEO perspective, I'm always thinking about linking to important pages and how that will help my internal link uh, site-wide. Similarly, building a better nav, a better header, uh, you might see site links under most URLs. One of the strongest signals you can send to Google about which pages are important are which pages are in your nav. You should also remember that Google is primarily crawling the mobile version of people's websites. So if you have a separate menu for your mobile, be sure to check that and not your desktop. Um, I'm seeing some questions here. Uh, I'll get to these questions later. Awesome. Building a better homepage. Uh, this is going to be one of the, the largest sections. Um, and I'm going to go through step by step what I look for in a, a decent small business homepage. Primarily, uh, these examples are going to show photographers, but you can hopefully use these for all types of small businesses. Uh, the first is going to be above the fold content. Uh, without scrolling down, a, a user should understand exactly what your offering is and who you are. Uh, and so for photographers, they should have some imagery. Uh, I like to see a big heading that tells exactly what the business is about um, without having to scroll. From a performance and technical standpoint, you should make sure that all of the fonts used uh, to get this first uh, largest contentful paint are preloaded. Uh, images should be preloaded as well, hopefully responsively. Uh, you want this. This is like the most important thing to load quickly. Uh, you should show your unique selling proposition. Uh, this is usually pretty standard. People hopefully understand that they should be telling users why they should uh, consider that brand. An about section. I like to include a short about section on the home page and then maybe link to the about page for further information from there. 
a process or next steps or experience. Uh, this will just tell users exactly what is the process for booking you or using your services. Uh, awards, features, and press. Uh, this is super important for just showing your authority and expertise. Uh, so any any press that your brand has received, any features online, any news articles, et cetera, you should be including those on the homepage. Reviews and testimonials. Uh, the testimonials block is really great. Uh, and I, I can't recommend it enough to have a, at least a handful of reviews on your homepage. And I've gone on my own site to trying to include like a re like really long text testimonials uh, because I really do value or I believe in the importance of those. And then resources. Uh, part of the long form content that you might be wanting to create for your small business will be resources for your potential clients. Uh, so from my business, I'm a wedding photographer. And so I'm telling people about the local wedding venues uh, and a, an engagement ring buying guide and wedding dress shops in my area. Uh, those are the three posts that I really want to rank highest because they're earlier in the uh, potential clients uh, purchasing decisions that they have to make. And they're very helpful. I've, I've spent a lot of time on that content. And so I want to link to them from the homepage, which tells Google the importance of those pages. And then a better contact form. This one's pretty simple. Uh, I think that's the wrong, I have a different page for that after, but um, building a cornerstone page. So pretty much take everything I, I told you about the homepage. And if you have any secondary specialties or secondary locations. So for me, I'm based in Portland, Oregon. If I also wanted to offer my services in Los Angeles, I could practically clone all of the same blocks and just make it LA based information if I wanted to have my services available in that city. Likewise, if I'm a wedding photographer and I also want to shoot portraits, I can make a portrait version of my homepage and have it on a separate URL, only targeting portraits and not weddings. And here, the post grid carousel is an incredible feature where you can show specific tags or categories and query just those, those posts uh, to show. A better about page. Uh, this is really fun. Another opportunity for you to show authority and expertise, uh, link to your social medias and tell your story. Uh, so one thing I've done recently with my latest website refresh is try to find all of the articles that I've either written or been mentioned in or interviewed on, uh, any podcast appearances, any past conferences or workshops that I've spoken at and add those to my about page. Uh, so I'm just wanting to really show Google these are the places that I've shown up on online, and this is why you should think of me as an authority in the space. Here's the contact form page uh, that I was trying to link to earlier. Uh, show your address if you have a local business. Uh, local business schema can also be important. Uh, show your telephone number, show an email address. I like to link to my Google business profile from this contact page. Uh, I actually linked from my address specifically. And then after people contact you, uh, I like in the cadence form that you can both log your submissions to your database and uh, send the user to a thank you page. So I re redirect to the thank you page on form submission. And that thank you page is important because I, I tell them exactly how long they need to wait for a reply, how they can access or how they can get a hold of me if they don't get a reply back uh, and kind of like set those uh, expectations there. Awesome. And I think I sp did like a speed run on that presentation, but uh, my SEO company is called Feel Your Photos and it's specifically for photographers uh, and wedding professionals. And if you're interested on that, you can go to feelyourphotos.com. And then my personal website is dylanmhowell.com if you want to check that out. And I'd love to take questions. All right, Paul's asking, uh, for page title branding, do I prefer the hyphen or the pipe? Uh, typically, I, li I like the pipe just because it takes up less space. Uh, but really, they're from a ranking perspective, they're, they're the same. And Joe, how granular uh, do I get? 
do you gauge which blocks outperform others and adjust the site based on performance? Gosh, I, I, if that question's in regards to actually like loading time performance, um, I don't really spend that much time uh, looking at how different blocks are going to perform. Um, I, I have my, my easy performance setup for the general cadence site is just good hosting. I prefer Cloudways, typically using Vulture servers, their high frequency servers. And then I like uh, WP Rocket is my performance plugin of choice. Uh, doing that with their new feature to get rid of unused CSS. And that's pretty much all I have to do on a cadence site to achieve really good performance. Uh, David. Cool. Regarding testimonials, is it more impactful to have multiple testimonials in a block or equally good to have them spaced thoroughly throughout the page? Gosh, I really like having them in one section, but God, yeah, I, I think you could make a case for a way to weave them throughout the page. Uh, but my current preference is having, having them in one block and then potentially linking to a page of even more testimonials, but good question. Branding on your image alt tags. Uh, generally, I don't. Uh, I don't think that that's really best for accessibility. And uh, typically, you're already going to rank for your like brand itself with your own images. Um, as far as people like seeing, like I guess the one instance where people do that is generally with Pinterest. If Pinterest is grabbing the alt tag to use as like the description uh, of a pin, I much if, if that's the case, I, I much prefer the actual Pinterest description meta tag. Um, that's, I think that's one area where I disagree with Pinterest professionals when they're always jamming uh, domain names and brand identities into alt text. Cool, I think that's awesome. all the questions we have. Awesome. Thanks Dylan, that was awesome. Totally. Thank you so much. There's, yeah. There's so much to understand about SEO and there's also so much to miss. So <laughs> totally. Super helpful. Yeah. I hope it helps. Yeah. And people can find you in our Facebook group. Is that right? I am in there yeah. for sure. Amazing. Um, and then, yeah, I think I have a link for you as well that I will add to um, the chat. Awesome. And yeah. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Totally. Thank you so much. You're welcome.